Hi, this is Ashley with the Trucker's Wife Life that is also becoming the Trucker's Wife Life to the Trucker's Life. Um, I have been doing podcasts lately. I haven't done a video in a while. Um, what has been going on? I have spent the last three weeks training at the KLLM Academy. Um, it is actually the KLLM slash FFE Academy. And I look tired because I am. Uh, I look a little red because I actually enjoyed the day in the pool. I got a little bit of sun before the rain came in. I'm here in the uh, Lancaster terminal. Um, Not actually at the terminal. I'm actually at a hotel just walking distance from the terminal. And I wanted to share a little bit about my experience. It has been wonderful. Um, Now, who I'm reaching out to is women that are curious about truck driving, women that are, you know, supporting a truck driver. I spent the last year supporting my husband on the road and it has been challenging because we get maybe three days together a month. You know, he'll be out for three weeks or four weeks and then we get three days or four days together. Um, And I have, I'm working on my path to join him on the road. Um, Apologize for the video content because (laughs) I'm actually just propping my phone up against a lamp. I am not a professional videographer or a video blogger. Um, I just want to reach people that are like me. You know, I am 55 years old. My son just turned 18. He's the youngest of all my children. He's quite independent. And so now is a good time for me to learn how to do what we need to do to retire someday. And that is join my husband in the trucking industry. Now, he works for a different company. And these next few months are going to be quite challenging because we're both working for different companies. Um, I chose KLLM for several reasons, which I will share with you. Um, One, I do believe that this is one of the best trucking academies out there. Um, I will put a little clip of the face of the building that I took when I was out there the other day so you can see what it looks like. just start with their facilities. Their facility is nice. We have three meals a day. The men have dorms in the um, terminal there, not actually the trucker terminal. That's a different place because where we have school in, in the Lancaster facility is the corporate headquarters for FFE, which is Frozen Food Express. Um, we do reefer runs and they are sister companies. So FFE and KLLM, they are kind of the same but kind of different. Um, FFE does more location to location. They do terminal to terminal runs. You know where you're going and all that. They do pay less uh, because there's a lot less wait time. Um, KLLM is OTR and they work like any other company. It is mostly reefer. Um, That is primarily what they do, which is great because everybody needs food. Everybody needs milk and dairy. Everybody needs meats and cheeses, and that's what reefer loads. We we deliver the food that people need. Where the dry van industry is getting a little stressful right now, the loads aren't as good as they have been. Um, Reefer carries the food that people need, and that is always in demand. So the industry is going a little bit better right now. so I am from Houston, the Houston area, and I drove up to Lancaster, which is just outside of Dallas. We are right off of 35, right before I-20. Here in the Lancaster area, that is where the terminal is. Uh, KLLM's corporate headquarters is actually Jackson, Mississippi. So I'm hoping that somewhere in my training and upgrade that I'll actually get to visit Jackson, Mississippi. I want to talk to my recruiter. I was super impressed with him. His name was Newell and he was so honest with me. You know, things that I thought that we would be getting that we wouldn't, he'd be like, oh, no, you're not getting that. And he didn't, what's the saying, blow, blow smoke up my skirt. You know, he didn't tell me what I wanted to hear to get me in the door. He was honest and I really appreciate that honesty because that is very rare with recruiters in the trucking industry. I can't say that every recruiter you get with this company is gonna be that honest with you. The first one I talked to, I was actually not very impressed with. I waited about two weeks and looked at other companies and then I called back and said, you know, I really, really wanna try working for this company because I like what I hear. And we spent about 30 minutes on the phone and little things like, you know, okay, you'll buy me a bus ticket to get to to training. 
Okay, so if you're gonna pay for my transportation to training, does that mean if I drive myself, will you um, reimburse my gas? And he's like, no, we won't. Because you're not actually an employee yet. And I said, okay, yeah, yeah, I understand that. But other trucking companies will say, oh, sure, we're going to pay. We'll, we'll reimburse you for that gas. Well, I drive an old, like, 1999 Suburban, so that's like $80 in gas. And um, other companies will say yes. And when you get there, you're waiting for that money back, and it doesn't come because that is not part of the deal. You don't get that. Um, other things, you know, a month ago, they had a sign-on bonus for new students where you would get five hundred dollars for training and like the first the second week you get 250 and when you first get on your trainer's truck you get another 250 and I just I knew about this from videos of people who had just gone through the school before me and so when I got to the second week I you know I messaged him I was like wait 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 don't we get paid two hundred and fifty dollars this week and you know he was like oh no call me as soon as you get a break and so I called him and he said, no, actually, you know, he said, we never discussed that. And I thought back, I'm like, no, we didn't. I was assuming from other YouTube videos that I would just automatically get the sign on bonus. And he said, no, we discontinued that like right before you started. I was like, oh, OK, well, now I know where I stand. And I really, really appreciated that honesty that he said, no, you're not getting it. He didn't say, oh, well, yeah, you should have. But what, whatever, you know. Other companies, they're not so honest about what you can't get, what you don't get. Um, now, the good side, as of right now, okay, KLLM, um, let me see, I went through, let me just backtrack a little bit. I jump around so much. Um, I went through three weeks, it's 22 days for the academy, and the first two or three days you spend studying for your permit test, and that is intensive. It is exhausting. Um, the test in Texas is a four-part test, so you have the Texas Special Regulations, you have General Knowledge, you have the Air Brake Test and the Combination Vehicle Test. So there are four tests that you're taking. And the instructor, my instructor was Carl, he was awesome, he gave us everything we needed to know to pass this test. If you don't pass it, you're not paying attention and you're not spending your off time studying. Um, many of us, we used apps that helped quiz us, and they were state-specific apps for what we need to know for this state that we live in to pass the CDL permit test. And so we, had, we got pushed back a day because our first day of the week was Labor Day, which everybody was off, so we actually started on Tuesday. Usually classes always start on a Monday. Um, and so we studied Tuesday, Wednesday, we took our test on Thursday, and I came in so confident, and I came in, I'm not scared of tests, I don't have a test phobia, so if people that have, you know, difficulty testing, I could understand it would be a little bit more scary, but I knew that they had given us every tool we needed, they had given us every opportunity to understand the material and to do, the, do our best. And actually, you know, we have quite a bit of time to take this test, and I finished it pretty quickly because I was very confident in my answers, and I passed it. I passed all four tests. You know, they gave us an opportunity, like when we would take, first we did the special Texas Special Regulations. We took that, and he's like, do you want to study a little bit on the general knowledge? And I'm like, nope, just give me the test. He's like, okay, take your time. Um, but when I know my material, I know my material. And so I took the test and I turned that in. I did the air brake test. I did the combination test. And I saw the results from the first three. I had passed the first three. And then we had, you know, had to wait for the other students to finish their testing. And then it was lunchtime. And we had to wait until after lunch to get the final results. Did we pass or did we not? Do we have to come back the next day and take some more? If you do not pass your permit test the first day or any portion of those four tests, you know, if you didn't pass one of those or two of those um, or all of them, you get an opportunity to do it again on the next day. And then, you know, we had, a, we actually had two girls. Um, my class was very unusual. When I walked in, we had, a, we had nine students, which is really small compared to what they used to do. You, I, I have seen videos where they had 44 students in a class, but now our class had nine and seven of those were women which was just amazing i mean the other instructors would stick their head in and they're like wtf oh my gosh how did this happen you know you have so many women in this class 
and I'm very proud of that. Uh, we we were a great group of people. Um, now at the end, when everybody's taking their CDL class, th you know, testing three weeks later, we're down to six. Uh, two of the women did not pass the uh, permit testing, so they'll ha they'll have the opportunity to go to the DMV, take it again, and they contact their recruiter. Once they pass the permit test, they can come back and complete the driving training. Um, one guy was because. He just didn't take it. I mean, he was a good driver, and we were really surprised, but he just showed up late too many times. And that shows that you're not committed, and, you know, if you can't show up on time for class, how are you going to show up on time for your loads? And if you're late for a load, the company gets charged, and that's not a good thing. So he was let go. It was a shame. You know, we all felt really bad that he, you know, ha he was let go, but that's just how it goes. So how is this training? It is awesome. Um, my husband, <clears throat> he trained with one company, one trucking company, and it was a really bad experience. It was very stressful. Um, they put him in a, ho a crappy hotel room with other people. Each week he had a different roommate. Um, this company puts you in a solo room. Uh, the gentlemen stay at, <laughs> gentlemen, I say that lightly. I love you guys. Um, the guys stay at the dorms at the academy, the upstairs of the academy is dorm rooms. Uh, the women are put in hotel. It depends on if they're KLLM or FFE as to where they stay and where the contract is. I happen to stay at the Sleep Inn, which is also a mainstay, uh, same company. And it's nice. I mean, it, you know, you want to see? My room is nice. Now, my bed's not made because it's Sunday, but it's a pretty room. I actually have a little video clip I can include of the room I have. Sorry about my hand. Um, the colors are nice. The bed is firm. The pillows are Oh my gosh, I have six pillows plus the one I brought, so it's so comfortable. Uh, we have a nice pool out back. You know, yesterday and today I actually got in the pool for the first time in 15 years. And training was so hot. I mean, the, the first week we were out there, we had 105 degrees with feel like temperature of who knows what. Um, last week was a little bit better because it dropped down to the 90s. Next week's supposed to be pretty nice in the 80s, but we're done with our training, so it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, in nice accommodations, they have breakfast at the hotel every morning, or you can go to the academy where they give you breakfast and lunch, and then you can take a dinner home, which dinner is whatever they serve for lunch. But you get, you know, you get a dinner item, a main entree, you get a vegetable, you get a roll, or something like that. We had spaghetti and meatballs. We've had uh, honey, honey mustard chicken. We've had fish. We've had uh, meatloaf and potatoes. And I mean, just you know, it's it's not home cooking, but it is. It's decent and it fills you up. You're not hungry, um, which is important because <laughs> we expand so many calories and we're sweating so much. I can't even imagine what the schooling would be like in the middle of winter. Um, this is a great academy, and I highly recommend it to anybody that wants to get their start in trucking, but you have to come 100% serious about your commitment to be in this industry. If you're not serious, then don't bother, you know, really. I mean, because it's a, it's a great deal. So KLLM, their program, for the 22 days of training, it is $4,000. You get accommodations that are taken care of by the company. Now here's an example, okay, of, of a competitor that Swift, they have an academy and you can go there, it's over $7,000 for their training. And then they also charge you almost $1,300 for the accommodations and all that you have to pay back out of your paycheck. So you're paying like $100 a week for the training, you're paying like $50 a week for the accommodations, which is over 26 weeks. Um, the training you're paying back over two years. And the difference with KLLM, you owe $4,000, okay? If you mess up during training and you have three days, okay, when you first get there, the first thing you do is you read over the contract of the training and you decide within three days, is this something you really want to commit to? It's going to be $4,000, no matter what. And they don't charge you any extra for the accommodations or the shuttle service or the dinners and lunches and breakfasts and stuff like that. Um, you have three days to rescind that contract. You have to say within those three days, this isn't for me. Now, okay, so you get two weeks through and 
something happens and you get kicked out. You know, your drug test comes back negative or they don't like your attitude, which they do say that 50% of their evaluation, if you're going to be an employee with this company or not, is what attitude do you bring to the table? You know, are you a pessimist? Are you an optimist? Are you somebody that wants to work hard? Are you lazy? They really watch that and they, you know, the, all the instructors watch that continuously and they report on that. It's not just your skill. Can you drive a truck? Can you back a truck? Can you... You know, it's like, what kind of an employee are you going to be for this company? And that's very important. Um, you know, so if you have a bad attitude, don't bother coming because they're not going to hire you. If you have a really good attitude and you're a good team player and you're optimistic about your future and things like that, then you're a good fit for this company. Okay, so here's the breakdown of the uh, $4,000 for the academy. So you sign a one-year commitment that you will work for them for one year to work off this $4,000. But they're not pulling it out of your paycheck. Every week, they credit you $80 of work towards what you owe the company. They don't take $80 out of your paycheck. They say, okay, you work this week for us, here's $80 off of the debt you owe us. And that is worked out to one year and after one year, you have completely paid off the $4,000 for the academy. So it hasn't cost you anything out of pocket. Now say, okay, six months down the road and you see, you know, another company that's offering more pay or more miles or whatever, and you choose to go to the other company, they prorate that. So, and they show you right up front, you know, you work this many weeks, here's how much of that $4,000 you'll still owe because you've worked off the previous time that you've actually worked. And so it's a pretty good deal. Uh, I haven't seen that with any other company. All other companies, they want you to pay back in dollars what that costs. There was one company, I'm thinking it was either Covenant or CR England. I don't remember which one. But no matter what, within that first year, if you broke that contract, you would owe them $10,000 plus 18%. You know, and I already told you, Swift, you know, that's over $7,000 over two years that you have to pay back. Plus, you have to pay almost $1,300 back for your hotel accommodations, which probably weren't really that great. I know when my husband worked for Swift, the place they put him up was like a La Quinta or something like that. It was not that nice. Um, so anyway, let me go over real quick what the Academy's like. I told you the first, you know, two or three days is studying for the permit test. Um, the third day you take the permit test, by the fourth day you're already on the range and you're learning how to pull forward and back, which is the straight back maneuver. Um, the instructors are amazing. And you cannot fail this course if you pay attention to step by step everything they give to you. They will tell you quite honestly, we're not teaching you how to drive a truck. We're not teaching you how to be a CDL operator we are teaching you how to pass the cdl exam with the dmv now the benefit we have is these are certified dmv instructors and we get to take our cdl exam within the company we don't have to go to the dmv with somebody who doesn't care if we can drive or not doesn't care if we get a license or not they don't you know there's the dmv is so impersonal um Boy, this is getting a little long. So we spend the first few days, we're learning, the first couple days, we learn the straight line backing, which honestly for me, that was the hardest. I just, after the first day, I wanted to go home and cry because I didn't understand how they were telling us to make corrections when things weren't going wrong, right. Um, within three days, we were already doing offset backing, blind side, 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 which to me was easier because they gave us a paper that said, okay, you do this. And as soon as you do this, you do that. And then as soon as you do that, you do this. And before you know it, you are backed into the adjacent lane and everything's great. Um, what I did is I would go to the instructors because there's like three or four out on the range that work with different groups. And I'd say, I don't understand. You know, here's a stupid, stupid question and break it down to a kindergarten level answer for me. And they would do that. And they would explain, you know, and finally after I talked to, you know, two or three different instructors, I was like, oh, I got it. 
my God, I can't believe I did it. Look, I did it, you know. And uh, even better, you know, so that by the, the end of the second week, you're doing parallel parking. So you'll do an offset and then you'll do a parallel. Of course, you already did the straight back because that's part of each of, of these maneuvers at some point or another. And when the trailer starts, you know, getting kind of wonky on you, they teach you how to correct it so you can pull straight into that spot. Um, also, the pre-trip inspection. You know, you spend so much time. When I first started, I knew absolutely nothing about the parts of a truck. And a pre-trip involves all the mechanics of a truck, from the very front, you know, to the engine compartment, to the in cab, to the uh, fifth wheel whole uh, coupling system, to the trailer, and the axles, and the suspension systems, and the brake systems, and the steering, and, you know, there's so many parts that you have to be able to monitor and look at and see that everything's in good working order, and that's part of our, our test. And honestly, right now, I could do a pre-trip inspection test from the front to back or from the back to front and hit 99% of the parts on that truck accurately. Um, so I knew when I went to my testing, which is at the end of week three, um, from the date that you finish your permit, you, it's 15 days is the first day you can take your CDL driving test. Um, they also, within the second week, the end of the second week, they already have you out on the road learning how to drive these trucks within traffic, on a highway, making turns left, making turns right. And they just keep you going and keep you going through these scenarios until you get it right. You know, how to get through, you know, intersections and do traffic checks and to merge onto highways and merge onto service roads and turn on to, you know, different streets in different directions, how to do a left into another left. And, you know, they're really, you know, I am so impressed with the instructors here. I give them all raving reviews. Um, I can't speak for every academy they have. I know they have one in Burns Harbor, Michigan, or New, uh, Indiana. I'm sorry, Burns Harbor, I think is in Indiana. They have one in Jackson, Mississippi. And um, they have here in Lancaster. I'm sure they have a couple others. I know they have terminals in Winter Haven, Florida. They have a terminal in uh, Atlanta, I believe. I mean, you know, there's a lot of terminals. I don't know if every terminal's an academy or not. Um, but it's been a great experience. And so last Friday, I was the first student to take the driving test. And I had told them when they were scheduling, I really wanted to be near the first. Um, it's called Rip Off the Band-Aid. <laughs> and I didn't want to sit around and be out on the practice field practicing, practicing, knowing other people are out actually taking their CDL exam. I wanted to be one of the first, and so they did that for me. And I was the first of my class to become an official KLLM employee. And this next week we go into orientation. So this will be week four. Um, I miss home, you know, but I know that not this weekend, but next weekend I actually got to request a home time. Um, because I'm just starting, it will not be paid. I actually will not get paid until I step onto a trainer's truck. And uh, let me see what else. Okay, so the advantages of KLLM over other trucking companies. And this is really what set me with them. And I don't know if you listened to my podcast, but I had explained that, you know, I had called KLLM at one point and I talked to one recruiter and he was like the mercenary. Let's just come to, come to work and earn a, earn a paycheck. And he was like, oh, we don't have any school openings until December. And, well, I'll just put your application on hold. And I'm like, okay, um, that doesn't sound so good. But I was like, okay, whatever. And I w started looking into other companies. I looked into Swift. I looked into um, Stevens Transport, Wilson Transport. Um, what else? I looked into a few of them, Covenant and CR England. And I, every time I talked to a new recruiter with a different company, I just got so disheartened. And I was like, this does not feel right. I don't like what they're telling me. And so I said, okay, I really, really, really want to work for KLLM. And I like what I've heard so far. And I've, looked, I've liked all the research I did. And so I called back and I got a different recruiter this time. His name was Newell. And that's, I told you about him earlier, who's incredibly honest with me. I spent over 30 minutes on the phone with him. And even since then, I've contacted him about things. And, you know, he's given me good information, honest information. Even if the answer was no, I respected that he was being honest with me. So that was the first plus with KLLM. But he, um, he's, when I first contacted him, he's like, well, we have an, a class. Our next class opening is going to be October 23rd. 
And I'm like, okay, you know, that's fine. I, you know, I'm a waitress right now. Our business has been cut in half. My income has been cut in half. And it's time to do something else so I can make money to pay my bills. And, uh, you know, but I asked him, I said, well, do you, do you possibly have a wait list that you can put me on? And he's like, he looked on his computer. He goes, actually, we have nobody on the wait list in Texas. So I'm going to put you on that wait list and you're going to be the first person. And I was like, oh, this is so exciting, you know. I'm, I'm familiar with the trucking industry. My husband's been in it for over a year now, and we talk every day, and I hear all the ins and outs, the good and the bad, the dirty and the ugly, the pretty, you know, whatever, you know. So I'm not blind to what the trucking industry is. This is the most dangerous industry out there, and it is lonely, and it is hard, and it's long hours and a lot of regulations. But anyway, so this is where I'm going. Um, so anyway, so I told him to put me on the wait list. He said, yeah, sure. You know, great to talk to you. We'll let you know as soon as an opening comes up. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, maybe two, three weeks, a month. I might get lucky because here it is, you know, it's right before Labor Day. It's still the very end of August. Well, the next day he texts me and he's like, you are not going to believe this, but we just had somebody pull out of class. He said, would you be able to come in next week? He said, well, now it's Labor Day, so we're not going to start on a Monday. It'll be on Tuesday. Can you be there? And, you know, because I knew this was the path I was going to take, I'd already started, you know, purchasing the clothing I need and um, things that I needed to go to school to prepare for being on a trainer's truck and things like that. And so I was like, yeah, I'll be there. And luckily, before I left, my husband had home time. So he was here that weekend. And I was like, oh, my God, babe, I'm going to trucking school. I'm going to be a trucker. And he's like, you are cray cray. My wife is crazy because she's been hearing about this industry for a year and she still wants to dive into it. Um, Of course, our ultimate goal is to eventually drive together. We want to be a team and we want to ride together. And with all of our kids being grown up, this is a huge possibility for us. Um... But anyway, okay, so this video is getting way too long. Let me get to the breakdown of why I chose KLLM. Um, One is when you start as a brand new driver out of the academy, right now, I can't guarantee this is going to stay. I don't know when you see this video. It is 60 cents a mile. Okay. My husband works for another company. Right now, he's making 55 cents a mile. Now, the one thing we know, it doesn't matter what you make per mile if you're not getting the miles. But I spend every weekend in the driver's lounge because we get to go over there and do our laundry for free. And I talk to these drivers and I'm like, what miles are you getting? And they're averaging 2,500 to 3,000 miles a week with KLLM. Um, There's no reason for them to lie to me. They don't know if I'm already a driver, if I am you know, still in the academy, whatever. They just see me in the lounge. I'm like, okay, how many miles are you averaging a week? And they're like, oh, you know, between 2,500 and 3,000 a week. And I'm like, well, that's pretty good. You know, right now in today's economy, that's pretty good. Um, My husband worked for companies that they kind of just kept his miles down to where he wasn't making any more than six, seven hundred dollars a week. And you can't survive and support a family and a home on that. Um, so, okay, so we start out with the $600 or the 60 cents a mile, which is really good. And one of the biggest benefits of working for this company right now, I don't know how long this is going to last, but right now for every seven days that you're out, you earn two days of home time. So if you're out for seven days, you can get two days of home time. Now, seven days out is not long enough really to take a break. Um, as an OTR driver, you really should think about three or four weeks out at a time. But if you're out three weeks, Then you've just earned six days of home time. But you say, okay, realistically, I really do want to be on the road. I want to be getting my miles. And I'm going to work three of those six days. Well, this company is the only company, sorry, there's smears on this table, is the only company that I know that pays $100 a day for home time. That is one of the best sales features you can have for a company because I have not yet come across any other company that pays home time. Uh, $100 a day, it's not as much as you're going to make when you're spinning your wheels. You'll make more, you know, hopefully if you're, you know, driving five, you know, between five and 600 miles a day, you're bringing home, you know, 250 plus a week, I mean a day by driving. So it's not as much, but no other company pays that. If you take home time, your next check takes a huge hit. 
you know, where you might just get a $500 check if, you know, and if you have benefits, it may be even less than that. So, okay, 60 cents a mile to start. After three months, you get 62. After six months, you get 64. And at one year, you get 65. Now, it slows down after that. You get one cent a raise each year after that up to 70 cents a mile. Now, if you're an experienced driver that comes in with the company, I believe you start at 70 cents a mile or somewhere around there. Um, and then you get your yearly raises after that. So this company is actually paying more and they're giving their drivers miles. The harder you wanna run, the more miles they're gonna give you. Um, that's what all the drivers I spoke to said. And they said, if you're lazy and you only wanna drive, you know, two, you know, three to six hours a day, they're not gonna give you the miles because you're not showing that you're serious. Um, so, okay, we have the pay, starts at 60 cents a mile. We have the pay to home time, $100 a day. Oh, like I said, okay, so you get, you earn six days off and you take the three days. So you get paid $100 for those three days, but you also get paid $100 for those additional three days that you earned. So that's good. Now the downside to that is if you decide to take those six days, you may come back to a different truck. So if you're gonna take more than five days off, you better bring everything off your truck because you may come back to another truck. Um, they do have new equipment, um, from what I've heard. They have um, 2024 Kenworths, Peterbilts, and Freightliners. Um, if you get into a brand new one or not, that's the luck of the draw. I don't know how they decide if new students get that, if experienced drivers get that, or if they strictly go to lease. I heard right now they're not running their lease op program uh, because the economy is just so iffy. It's really hard. Um, what else? There's a lot more positive than there is negative right now with this company in comparison with other companies. So that's why I have chose KLLM. Um, I will start orientation tomorrow. I am So we have about four days of orientation. We have our graduation ceremony on Thursday afternoon around 2 o'clock. Uh, we get our certificates. Uh, Thursday morning we're going to the DMV and getting our CDLs. Um, so we're pretty much going to learn about benefits and safety and what's expected us of us as trainees. Uh, we will spend at least six weeks on a trainee truck. That is 240 hours that we commit to being with the trainer before we go solo. And of course, once you finish with the trainer, you will come to the company and you will do what's called an upgrade. You will do backing tests, you will do road tests, and you'll take a written test to make sure that you have the knowledge to be able to drive as a solo driver. And so that's the next big step to take. Um, like I said, I'm gonna go through orientation this week. I'm gonna take a couple days home time because I've been away from my family for you know three weeks. There'll be four weeks at the end of that. My husband's working out his home time at the same time. Um, and actually I'll be home two days. He'll probably be home three and then I'll be available to work with a trainer and I'll find out next at the end of next week or next weekend who my trainer is going to be. I wasn't real picky. I didn't say it has to be male or female, smoker, non-smoker. I just kind of want the first available, but I said, here's the date that I'm available because I do need a little bit of time with my family because I'm going to be gone for at least six weeks. Sometimes the training takes longer depending on did the truck break down and you lose time. Uh, did your trainer have to take home time? If they do stuff like that, if you know, if your truck breaks down that you're driving on and it breaks down for four days, you're going to have to make up that four days at the end of that training period. So you get that whole 240 hours. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really praying that I get a very good trainer. Is somebody that you know we both can get along really well, being in very close quarters for an extended period of time. Um, that's part of what makes training so challenging that you're living in somebody else's home space that truck is their home and you're moving in you have very little room to work with uh, I'm gonna start making my list of everything I need to take on a trainer's truck you really shouldn't have more than two bags and maybe a backpack uh, maybe I'll do a video to share that with you uh, a lot of people want to know what you need to take on a trainer's truck and what you should bring to training you know as far as the Academy I kept it very minimal um, my trainer's truck experience is going to be a little harder because we're broaching two different seasons. You know, if you're in the south, it's really hot and you want shorts. If you're in the north, it's going to be getting very cold and you want warm weather clothing, but you only have a very small amount of space. Basically, a trainee has the top bunk. You have your bags at the foot of your bed. 
you have your bedding, you have your pillow, and you need enough room to sleep because you put in a lot of long hours. Um, and so I'm going to start making my list. I think I broke it down to five different sections, which is, um, you know, clothing, bedding, um, shower stuff, miscellaneous, and I don't know. There was one other. I don't remember. I remember there were five sections. So I'm going to be making a list and I'll share with that with you soon. In the meantime, I hope you really enjoy this. Um, please like, subscribe, and share. I am not here just promoting KLLM. I want to talk to women about what it's like to be married to a trucker, what it's like to be a trucker as a woman. Um, I was really impressed with our class that we had, you know, six out of the nine people were all women. And, of course, that's not what graduates, but the two classes behind us, there was one female in each class. So it's majority men. Um, our class was very, very unusual. Uh, it's kind of nice because we all connected and uh, they, the instructors say that women are actually easier to teach. You know, we don't bring our egos to the table like men do. Um, we're willing and able to learn much more easily. So anyway, like, subscribe, share. I'm going to do some more videos here and there. I'm not out to become a big YouTube star. I just want to help people. Um, this is what we do. You know, the kids are all grown up. I don't want to deal with the empty nest syndrome I want to keep building my life. I want to build a retirement for me and my husband, and we want to do that together. And this is that journey. I'm hoping that I can get some beautiful U.S. footage. I know I'm going to be going through some really amazing places. Maybe I can bring you histories of small towns and places that I get to experience and drive through. Now, the sad part about trucking is you get to see a lot of beautiful places. You just don't get to stop and visit. Um, that's a dream for when my husband and I are traveling together that we can take our home times in some really amazing cities and places and landmarks. In the meantime, thank you for listening. I know this was pretty long. I am so sorry about that. Uh, my next video will be when I'm preparing for my trainer's truck, and I'll probably make that this week while I'm still in the hotel because I think I have just about everything I need except for a winter coat and winter gloves. Um, but everything else I think I pretty much have, stuff I need to layer and all that, and how to keep it minimal. Um, it just cracks me up when I see these, these women making, oh, I'm going into trucking and I have my whole YouTube wardrobe. And you know what? Sorry, girls. You end up looking like you're the uh, lot lizards out there. But anyway, that's just my opinion. You don't have to love me for saying it. Um, this is a tough industry, and you have to be able to stand up in it. I have my work boots. I have my jeans. I have my shirts. I have my caps. Um, you know, I'm ready. It's going to be hard. I'm sure there's going to be some videos where I'm just going to be in tears out of exhaustion and frustration, but this is life on the road. Um, I am the trucker's wife life going into the trucker's life. And I thank you so much for listening today. Thank you.